The U.S. Navy's first and only woman admiral commissioned 11 student nurses as ensigns in the Navy Nurse Corps today. Eight of them were young women who now had the same chance as men for promotion to flagship ranks. Rear Admiral Aline Dirk erased the traditional barrier to women with her promotion to the third highest rank in the Navy. As far as, as the Nurse Corps officers who are being commissioned this afternoon, these women will have increased opportunities for promotion and possibly be able to attain a higher rank at an earlier time than what I had been able to achieve during my career. When we talk about the overall picture of women in the Navy, they have increased opportunities for selection, for new jobs, for new careers, then the opportunity for increased rank. Miss Dirk doesn't think a woman's role in the Navy will change overnight. But within five or ten years, she thinks the Navy is going to be a place where sex doesn't count, at least in promotions. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move. The governing board of the National Council of Churches is dead. In its last gasp last night, the 800-member delegation voted calling the Vietnam War immoral, condemning drug traffic, and urging quality child care services. A black was named president of the new, more streamlined governing board, and broader representation will supposedly be offered women, ethnic groups, and youth. Reverend Ari Brower, a member of the new governing board, commented to me about those resolutions. One of the difficulties with all the expression was the vast number of resolutions that came as a result. Some of the resolutions had serious attention, and some of them uh, were dealt with by people who didn't uh, know a great deal of what they were voting on which does something to uh, lessen the force of all of them. So one of the questions that the new governing board will have to deal with will be the accountability that uh, the members of that board feel to each other and the denominations supporting the council feel, the support for the resolutions. It'll have to discipline itself to deal with uh, more force with resolutions that it considers of primary importance. The first full meeting of the new governing board will be in February. For Channel 8 News in the Move, this is Judy Hanna in Dallas. My organization is pro-business, not anti-consumer. I'm not trying to replace any consumer agency in any shape or form. Uh, on the contrary, everybody has went wild trying to capitalize on the consumerism movement. So far, nobody has spoke out for the businessman. I am not anti-consumer, but my whole purpose of being is to be a voice for the business people and to back the business people in the community against some of the unfair consumer legislation against some of the eccentric consumer uh, groups that we have cropping up now. And I'm not going to name names today because I don't think it's necessary to get into personality. You think they've done more harm than good? They're doing a lot of harm, yes they are. Well, a quarterback uh, is Jeff Rumball, and uh, Jeff executes our offense well, throws the ball well, and. Uh, has good poise and, and good leadership about him. Uh, other two running backs are uh, Rucker Lewis, uh, who's our full back, and this is his third year to start for us, so uh, his experience has paid off, and he's done a good job this year for us. 
The other running back is Glenn Sanders, and Glenn has alternated uh, in the past and is alternating right now with Tony Wallace, and they're both doing a good job. Lewis is your, is your big gun, though, isn't he? Well, I guess so as far as yardage is concerned, but they're all important to us. What about your defensive team? I understand that you aren't too big. Well, uh, compared to a lot of people, I guess we're not very large, and uh, but they understand what they're trying to do, and uh, we do have good quickness, and that's helped quite a bit. You try to maintain an equal balance on offense and defense rather than one, perhaps carrying the other one a little more? Well, I think uh, they kind of complement each other, and uh, both have done a good job for us. Coach, it's been extremely cold all week. If it continues through the weekend, what kind of a factor would that be? Oh, I, I never have played in one I thought was too cold. Uh, I don't think it gets quite that cold down here. Hope not anyway. Uh, Spark? <laughs> well, he was talking about, you know, the, the fact that everybody seemed to play with 60 minutes of intensity in the ball game. Yeah, I think it, uh, getting, it's coming down to the end of the thing, and we have another shot at it, I think. We will have another shot at it. I hope we do. And uh, we've got a lot of old pros on this team, and uh, we'll get a lot more shots at it, so I think everybody's going to try to put it together and uh, try to do it one more time. It'd be great if we could do it, and uh, I think we'll have a good chance. Okay, Dave, given that, you say you've got a lot of old pros in the ball club. Is there a point during the season when you guys, as a team, <clears throat> in effect say, to heck with the coaches, to heck with the fans, it's us, so we got our backs against the wall, we'll just do it our own way? That's what we said last week. That's, that what, right? that's what's happening now. Yeah, we're, we're uh, it's, it's all on the line now, so we either do it or we don't, and we'll see. <laughs> Are you confident? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we got a good football team, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a fact, you know. Every game we've been in this year, we've uh, dominated it to the first, and uh, we haven't been quite as hungry this year as we have in the past because uh, we did it last year, and we're the champions, but now it's uh, we have another shot at it, and you know, make some more of that dough. So it <laughs> helps with the house what, payments, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the name of the game. During our course of the season, we've been uh, maybe a little uh, more explosive on offense, and we've played a mighty uh, good defensive ball game these last four games. And our defense has really come of age, and we've gotten experience there and, and come on real strong defensively. Coach, East Texas got into the finals by blanking Central Oklahoma 54 to nothing. You are here by way of a tie and penetrations. Are you in awe of the East Texas team? Well, uh, let me say this. We respect East Texas. Uh, we're not all, all fearful of East Texas, but we respect them. And that 54 to 0 score uh, is a very impressive score. And uh, uh, I can understand why they are playing this championship ball game. And I feel like that our club is worthy of this type of challenge. And hopefully we'll make that uh, history. Your, your ball club is not lacking in confidence then? Uh, no, sir. We feel like that uh, if we had been, we wouldn't have made the trip. We let somebody else come and play. The cost of running Tarrant County's John Peter Smith Hospital is roughly $15 million a year. It's mainly supported by the assessment of $0.75 cents per $100 valuation property tax in the county, and about a 33% collection on hospital bills. One of the major problems any county hospital district faces in major metropolitan areas is that they cannot turn away any patient who requires treatment according to law. So many patients who come to John Peter Smith Hospital do not even reside in the county. And according to county officials here, that means they are getting a free ride while Tarrant County citizens are footing the bill. That's the opinion of County Judge Howard Green, and when I visited him today, he said he is already pushing for state legislation to remedy the situation. I've attended a couple of meetings in Austin and in Dallas uh, concerning legislation that will enable the taxpayers of this county to get it off their back for paying the, uh, for the indigent pa patients in uh, surrounding counties, other counties throughout Texas. Uh, what we, we have uh, people coming in from other counties That's around Tarrant County. How much does it cost them just a year, do you know? A quarter of a million dollars a year, and they come from as far away as Hardin County. Have you spoke with any legislators about this legislation? Yes, the chairman of the Tarrant County delegation, Dave Finney, has been apprised of it and is very interested in uh, trying to do something about it. And I've also 
uh, found a, reception, a receptive uh, ear from uh, Senator Betty Andahar, and I also plan to talk to Senator Bill Meyer. While the cost of treating indigent patients from outside Tarrant County is a quarter of a million dollars in Fort Worth, the cost in Dallas, Harris, and Bayer counties are said to be twice or even triple that amount. Judge Green said he expects other county officials across the state to back the legislation. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move in Fort Worth. To a lot of people across the nation, the old-fashioned Christmas tree with its sticky needles and prickly limbs just isn't worth the trouble. So manufacturers responded to consumer demands and created the artificial Christmas tree. Dallas consumers want to know how to buy a safe plastic tree. The Food and Drug Administration advises consumers to look for labels when buying these trees. Trees in compliance with flammability tests are usually labeled fireproof or fire retardant. If the tree isn't labeled, obviously the consumer should check with the FDA or store to see just what this tree is made of. There are two kinds of plastic trees, the PVC, short for polyvinyl chloride, which has long needles locked into wire branches, and an added benefit, it won't burn. On the other hand, there's a more natural looking tree, the polyethylene, but be sure and have plenty of water pails on hand for sudden fires. Linda Fitzgerald, a student at North Texas, wants to make a career out of genetic counseling. She asked Contact 8 how one latches on to a job like this. Well, Linda, we did a little research and found that Darlene Wise of Forest Avenue Hospital in Dallas can give you all the details. And a viewer on Hatton Street in Dallas fears that criminal types could be lurking behind the tall weeds and trees between Hatton and Sicily Streets. Dallas Streets and Sanitation Department did not find any gangsters in this wooded area, but did issue a cleanup notice to the owner of the property. The violation has now been corrected. If you have any problems or questions, write me at Contact 8, Communication Center, Dallas. Please include a stamped, self-addressed envelope. That's Contact 8. I'm Cecile Burant. In some ways, I look back and see all of my contemporaries not with me anymore. And then I look to the future and see what it holds, how different the construction is than it was 72 years ago when I started out. Everything then was mule, mule power and strong backs. Well, I know your life has been devoted, sir, to heavy uh, construction, that is, highways, airports, railroads. What do you think about the new regional airport? Well, it's about the greatest thing that man has ever conceived, I guess. And uh, there is more concentrated machinery out there, more cranes and more mechanized equipment than I suppose has ever been assembled any place before in the world. Sir, you've spent all your life doing this. Are you envious of such a situation as we have at the airport with all that congregation of equipment? Well, yes, it's pretty hard for a mule man to conceive what has taken place because that, of course, is the world's premier airport, I suppose, and uh, the immensity of it is just all, almost beyond comprehension. Mr. Allhands, of course, your life has been devoted to, to heavy construction, but what about the new building going up across the street? Do you watch it much through binoculars? or? Yes, I have. I watch it with amazement. The, uh, so much work is done with a crane. Now, I'm not a building contractor, but it amazes me about how many cranes they use in the erection of these buildings. By the way, uh, there's a gentleman here that has a presentation for you, uh, Mr. Chuck Kugler, who is the uh, president of the Dallas chapter of the Associated General Contractors. Mr. Kugler? Mr. Allhands, on behalf of the Dallas AGC chapter, I'd like to present you this hard hat because we know that safety is an ageless problem that faces us in, in our construction efforts. So on behalf of the Dallas AGC chapter, I'd like to present you this hard hat. This hard hat is something that's come into use in the last few years. When I started construction 72 years ago, we didn't have any safety-first programs. Uh, it is just up to the uh, 
labor to take care of myself. We had lots of uh, hurts and uh, even deaths, but it is considered a part of uh, opening up a new country. And now we have all these safety measures. And I'll appreciate this from you, Mr. Kruger, and from your membership. Looking at our Please, who have supported them through this against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, the duty of the office on which I am about to enter. Chief Gates, to be able to. Lorna Jean Ramsey, Texas Women's University. Oliver. Oklahoma Baptist University, and Janice Wilkinson, Oklahoma Baptist University. So I think this and it takes Texas Christian University, Martha. And federal and the business people themselves. Uh, this will be completely politically un- It's coming up, uh, what it means to them, and asking their viewpoint. And How you doing? Jim? See you. Nice to see you. Man. I understand we're going to have uh, some new legislation. Well, we hope we will. Yes, sir. That's right. Good. To uh, give you a treatment today, uh, Mr. Johnson, I think that we ought to start an ID with B5W. Oh, nice. Uh, put the 
All right, sir, you ready to go? Yes, yeah, go. Mr. All Hands, you're recognized as one of the uh, oldest general contractors in the country. How do you feel about that now? Well, 